Joining me now to talk politics is State Senator Missy Irvin. She's Republican from Mountain View, State Representative Greg Letting, Dem Democrat from Fayetteville. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. Now, before we get started, there will be no disparaging of each other like we saw in the U.S. <laughs> Senate this week. We're going to vote Rule Absolutely 19, not. okay? We actually have decorum in our All right. We do. <laughs> we do. Let's talk about some uh, action at the Capitol this week. The deadline for proposed constitutional amendments has filed. Missy, you've got one, which we're going to come to second here, but... I think that there are two that have a good chance for getting referred just based on the number of sponsors. Your tort reform one is one, voter ID, another one. Greg, I'm going to come to you first. Let's talk about voter ID. Why is it problematic to put voter ID in our state constitution? I just think it's uh, a solution in search of a problem. Some of the best research shows that in-person voter fraud just doesn't happen. There was a study back in 2014 that looked at over a billion ca ballots cast in the U.S. over a 14-year period, and they found 31 credible cases of in-person voter fraud. It's just got to be one of the dumbest ways to sway the outcome of an election. Senator Irvin, Republicans have long advocated for uh, voter ID in sure. the state constitution as well as in other states. Why is this necessary? I think it's common sense. I mean, I think when you go in and you're wanting to vote, and this is a, a freedom and a right that people have died for, our freedom and right to vote, and I think it's just common sense that you should be able to identify who you are with an identification of all different kinds that are accepted um, to be able to cast that ballot and to, to, to vote for the people that you want to vote for. So to me, it's just common sense, really, uh, at the end of the day, and uh, I think it's appropriate, and we want to have a fair, uh, election system. We want to make sure that it maintains that fairness. There's, there's near super majorities of Republicans in the legislature. I think that if it wants to go through, it's sailing through. Let's yes. talk about uh, tort reform, Senator. Uh, you are one of the lead sponsors. There's a variety of arguments for and against this measure. It's sure. going to be a heated debate, uh, no doubt about that. Give me your elevator speech, 60 seconds or less. Why? do we need tort reform in Arkansas? Well, I filed this on behalf of 15 senators and 53 House members. So it's really collectively our legislation. It's something that the state has been working on since 2000. 2003, we had legislation on this policy and this issue. It was wiped away by the courts. Uh, w this is a restoration of being able to put that policy back in place to make sure that Arkansas is competitive with all the states around us that have done exactly the same approach in lawsuit reform. It's good for the state of Arkansas. We've got to be able to compete for industries that will gr grow jobs. At the cost of human life, putting a price tag on human mm -hmm. life, which is the uh, counter argument. Well, and that counter argument I would say to them is then this is the system that we're in. Civil, uh, civil lawsuits clearly define through monetary means damages to to victims and so this is part of the system we're not changing that we're just placing uh, parameters on that uh, but the same folks could say I, I mean they they have to argue one way or the right. other but the system is that and when there's damages to a victim we award that or recognize that with monetary damages. It's Re part of the system. Representative Letting, I give you the counter on tort reform. There are absolutely arguments for tort reform and I think we do need to try and find the, the right way to do it, but the key is finding a right way to do it so that we don't hurt people, we actually prevent frivolous lawsuits, and that we allow the judicial branch to do its job as an independent and equal branch of so government. you got some concerns about the, the part that puts some of the uh, purview of how the whole court system is <clears throat> going to work into the legislature's camp. I do. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have three equal branches of government and they need to be independent and be able to do their job. Senator? And I would respond that it's the legislative branch's job and responsibility to set policy and I think this restores that power back to the legislative branch of government. It follows the federal government and how they proceed on this as well as 16 different states have the exact same uh, parameters in place as to what is being presented in this tort reform amendment. Well, I think it's going to fly out, so we're going to see how voters feel about these arguments here. All right, let's take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back and talk taxes, the budget, and uh, maybe a little medical marijuana. You guys stick around. <laughs> we're back with more right after this. Welcome back. We're talking politics with Representative Greg Letting and Senator Missy Urban. Let's turn our attention to tax cuts. You guys cut a lot of taxes in this yeah. legislative session already. We're just a think we're through. third away <laughs> through. We may not be, but so far, 63 million plus. Yes. The governor has put some state agencies, though, on notice that they may need to work into some contingency plans because state revenues are not coming in at the level that you guys have forecast. Senator, I'll come to you first. Where are you going to advocate for spending cuts? 
if the revenue doesn't match the amount of money that you need. I think there's lots of areas to be able to do that. There's There are built into those budgets different areas and line items, whether it be travel and reimbursements and conferences and things like that. Um, there's also cash fund balances. Some agencies do have those. And so I, that's where I would look at first, is being able to let agencies draw down what they already have in their cash balances that carry forward from previous budgets. Um, and I think that would be a great place to start. Representative? I think there's absolutely an argument for tax cuts. Who doesn't want to pay less taxes? And I think we really need to take a hard look at how we tax people in Arkansas. So I applaud the Blue Ribbon Commission that we're putting together. But uh, we also have to admit sometimes that maybe we're not in a position to afford tax cuts. Uh, we don't want to go overboard because uh, we do have a responsibility to provide some essential services. But I agree, some agencies are going to have to do some pretty serious belt tightening. Well, there's a pretty easy argument for someone listening or watching this to say, well, why don't you guys make some of those cuts now if you can already identify some areas where there should be some cuts. Why not? Well, <coughs> my position, I would say I'm, I'm in a super minority, so I'm not <laughs> sure that they, we, any recommendation we might might not uh, get uh, get a lot of attention. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I think there's lots of different areas, and I think we're looking towards that. I mean, what we have right now is a revenue stabilization process that is really where we balance the budget, and that's a process where we prioritize the spending into A, B, and C categories, and I think that's where you're going to see cuts being made and shifts being made is during that process. Right now, we're writing appropriation bills, um, which gives you levels to spend up to, but the real work comes when you stabilize uh, through that act and really spend the money that you have and not more than what you have. Yeah, and that's why it's built into those ABC that's and correct. tiers right. there. Let's yeah. talk about medical marijuana, really a dominant issue in this legislative session <laughs> on a lot of fronts because there's just been, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts to it. There's yeah. a lot of legislation tied to it. Uh, let's just focus on one area just with time constraints sure. here. Um, should legislators curtail medical marijuana's use, whether that is through allowing it to be smoked or not smoked or advertised or not advertised? Mm -hmm. Where's the parameters for putting this on here, Senator? I think there's a, a healthy dialogue and debate going on at the state capitol with all of us who really are just trying to wrap our heads around this issue. I mean, what the voters voted for was a huge regulatory program for medical marijuana and what is the definition of medical marijuana, how it is uh, to be administered, how it's supposed to be dosed and used, regulated, the law enforcement issues that go with it. So we're really trying to wrap our, wrap our head around that. I would advocate that I definitely do not want it to be uh, advertised or found in products that would be attractive to children. Um, and let, you know, if they're under the care of someone, that's a different scenario, but however, you know, when it's found in gummy bears and things like that and it's mm -hmm. advertised towards children, that's inappropriate. If we're really talking about medical marijuana, then it needs to be medical based. Yeah. Representative, should there be some limits? Should there be I some curtailment? There should be some limits. I mean, obviously it passed overwhelmingly, so I think there's a clear demand from the people of Arkansas, but we want to make sure we do it responsibly. Mm -hmm. I do have some concerns about advertising, but I also want to make sure patients know that it's available. Um, and, and in terms of some of the other restrictions, uh, you, you mentioned whether or not it should be smoked. Mm -hmm. uh, I have heard some concerns from people. It's what if you have a, a spouse in the house who is uh, smoking it for medical purposes, uh, but the other spouse is obviously in close proximity. Is that spouse at risk of perhaps failing a drug test at work because of, of mm. the proximity there? So I think there are just some things that we really need to look uh, closely at, and I think so far the dialogue at the Capitol has been good. Yes, we, we have, I, uh, I guess those of us on the outside looking in at y'all's fishbowl have thought that this would be kind of a, a potential issue that could derail a lot of other stuff at the session. It does seem to be moving pretty mm -hmm. uh, systematically. What, what, what will be more of the problematic areas do you think that still have to be addressed in terms of medical marijuana? Uh, I think some of the legislation that's moving quickly are the stuff that we, we need to do to put the program into place and get it up and running. You have seen some other legislation out there that's looking to maybe uh, curtail it a little against the, the wishes of the voters. I think that's the stuff that maybe could get us into a little bit of trouble if we spend too much time talking about that or if we go against the voters. Uh, we'll see. And I, I think it's important for us to look at it and make sure it's a program that is self-sustaining. It has to be able to pay for itself. Yeah. We cannot use general revenue funds that are meant for education or meant for mm -hmm. those welfare systems of Medicaid or transportation and technology, you know, all those right. different 
infrastructure needs, we've got to make sure it's self-sustaining. And so that to me, we need to make sure that general revenue is there um, and we're not fighting over money we don't have yet. So. All right, I got to end the conversation there, <laughs> but I want you guys to stick around. We're going to yeah. do a little web extra. We're going to play a game that we like you to bet. call Good Trump, Bad Trump. You'll want to catch this online at talkbusiness.net when we're done. <laughs> so Senator Missy Irvin, Representative Greg Letting, thank you both very much. Thank, You're you. Welcome. thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. And welcome back to our Web Extra. We ran out of time on air as we often do. I'm with Senator Missy Irvin and Representative Greg Letting, and we are gonna play a round of Good Trump, Bad Trump. There's so much volume of what you have to <laughs> keep up with out of Washington, D.C. and the Trump yeah. administration that it's just easier to pick a needle out of a haystack and start talking about it though. So uh, Senator, I'm gonna come to you first. Do you wanna go Good Trump or Bad Trump? Which way are you gonna go? Oh gosh, I don't know. Good Trump. Let's right. say good Give Trump. Give me a good uh, Trump story this I week. Think, Something Donald Trump did that was good. Oh, I thought it was awesome that he and Ivanka, his daughter, uh, kind of snuck off and attended the ceremony where they brought the remains back of the Navy SEAL. I thought that was awesome. That was a good It was a really good, good moment. Good touch for the, yeah, it was the first fallen soldier under his watch. And uh, for him to go there and be with the family. That was just really classy, pretty awesome. Yeah, all right, you're gonna do good Trump or bad Trump? I'll, I'll throw a curveball. I'll do good Trump. You're gonna go good uh, Trump, yeah, right. You know, during the, the RNC back in the summer, Ivanka talked about the importance of paid leave for yeah. families. And uh, I think that's something that the administration has been talking about. And just the last week, I think, they've been talking about perhaps expanding the policy to fathers. Uh, I think that's a really good and important thing. All right. And I will know that we just passed maternity leave, paid maternity leave, That's my right. bill in the Senate today off All the right. Senate floor. So is it already through the House or is it got to go to the House? It will go to the House. Who's going to carry it in the House? Deanne Vaught mm -hmm. and we have some other folks. Clark Tucker's working on it over there mm -hmm. with us too. Yeah. Is it going to pass in the House? I certainly hope so. Well, you hope so, but what does the vote count? I mean, hey, I honestly don't know. I mean, we did get a Representative Clark Tucker had a bill in the House, um, it was modest in scope, I think, just for public employees two years ago that got out of the House and down to the Senate. So I think we've, we've shown that we can pass a, a paid leave bill. All right. Yeah. We'll see so if that it's happens. Coming. All right. Thanks for playing good Trump, bad Trump. Next time, I'm going to demand that you come up with bad Trump. Okay. Since you well, just bad. both went good this time, but I, no. like the, I like the positivity. It's good. Bad. Senator Missy <laughs> Herman, Representative Greg Letting, thank you so much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank that, you is, that is all for this Web Extra. You can keep up with the latest business and political headlines each and every day at talkbusiness.net. I'm Roby Brock. Thanks for watching.